Hello you. <laughs> what? <laughs> the hell is going on? I barely recognised myself when I woke up this morning. Obviously got this shaved off. It feels good actually. It feels very clean. Which is important. This is the Blackwater River and this is Fermoy in County Cork. I wasn't sure what to do when I reached this point to be honest in terms of my way back to where I began in the middle of Ireland but I received a very big sign last night when I walked into the guest house I stayed in the middle of town which away that's going to dictate where I'm headed today so if you think that sounds interesting make sure to keep watching this video thank you as always for supporting what I do head good body good feet good mind good all good Let's go. Yesterday I spent most of the day thinking about the route, which way I was going to walk back to where I began in the middle of Ireland. And when I reached Fermoy, I still didn't know what the answer to that question should be. However, I checked into a guest house there. I walked up the stairs and at the top of the stairs were a couple of really old suitcases. And on one of those suitcases was the name or the initials of somebody that I had been thinking about that day. And her name is Dervila Murphy. And Dervila Murphy lived in Lismore, which was only around about 40 kilometers from where I was looking at that suitcase. I know this might sound a little bit odd to some of you, but I actually feel as though I'm walking closer to Dervila's home. I suppose because this looks like the sort of place that she would want to live. Dervila Murphy was Ireland's greatest ever travel writer and the most prolific too. She wrote more than 25 books about her travels around the world and many of them were bestsellers. She traveled all over the world from Peru to Pakistan, from Africa, India, Siberia, Cuba to Israel. Her best-selling book, Full Tilt, was about a bicycle ride in the 1960s from Dunkirk all the way to India. She was renowned for her straight way of reporting and a very unpretentious, honest expression which was characterised in her books. She won many awards including the prestigious Edward Stanford Award for Outstanding Contribution to Travel Writing but her outspoken and independent stance kept her out of the mainstream in that the media and the state were careful not to celebrate her work or voice very much and certainly not in the way that it should have been. Dervila Murphy grew up in Lismore, County Waterford, the only child of Dubliners 
Fergus and Kathleen Murphy. Her father was the county librarian and her mother encouraged her to read and discuss books from an early age. As a child she enjoyed writing and often wrote stories that she gave to her parents as gifts at Christmas or birthdays. Her education in a convent in Waterford was cut short when she was aged just 14 because she had to go home and look after her mother who was suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. But she attributed her fearlessness to her mother and parenting because at the age of 16 in the 1940s it was her mother who suggested that she cycle through the continent alone and not many mothers did that as Dervila once said. In her 20s she attempted to write novels but soon found that fiction was not her forte. She then concentrated on travel writing and would go on to write more than 25 books making her the most prolific travel writer from Ireland and the books sold. She inspired millions. In her 30s she had a daughter Rachel with the then lit literary editor of the Irish Times who was married at the time and she was resolute about bringing up her daughter Rachel alone. Solitary by nature and fiercely independent, she often said that she enjoyed other people's company but was equally happy to spend long periods of time alone. Dervila continued travelling into her 80s and after her travels she returned to her home in Lismore where she walked her dogs and swam in the Blackwater River. She once said, I wouldn't live anywhere else than my own little bit of West Waterford. In May of 2022, Dervila passed away at her home in Lismore and I felt some tears welling up at the graveside, partly because when I saw that sad and lonesome mound in St. Carthage's cemetery, I was also imagining my own. find it so difficult to look at that graveside just how bare it is how neglected how forgotten it looks I didn't expect there to be flowers and bouquets all over it but in some way I did expect there to be some and it's quite the opposite it's, it looks like the, the most bare grave in the entire graveyard I feel like it's close. I've seen a photograph before. I have a feeling it's just here on the right. Jesus, what a weird feeling. And what a weird thing if this is it. Oh my God, it is. Her home is hidden away behind the main street in Lismore and marked by an old black gate. I found it fitting for these gates to be locked because it gives off a lovely illusion that she may still be in there making tea and writing about her most recent adventure. I really feel that few females have made a greater contribution to the annals of travel and adventure and yet have been so badly served in terms of recognition. And I do think that there should be a statue here in Lismore and a plaque at the very least, a commemoration of what was Ireland's greatest ever travel writer and someone that not only inspired females all over the world to go on adventures but to inspire people of all kinds all over the world to forge their own path and to essentially live life on their own terms.